Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Family Research Council. I'm Bethany Demin. I'm the Student Interns and Lectures Coordinator here. Uh, family is in our name, and it's at the center of everything that we do here. We believe the family is the basic building block of society and that it's foundational to the health of communities, countries, and the world. And that's why we're so excited to be hosting this launch event for Meripedia, which is a groundbreaking social science web encyclopedia developed by our own Dr. Pat Fagan and the Marriage and Religion Research Institute staff and was unveiled a few weeks ago at the World Congress of Families in Salt Lake City, Utah. This promises to be an enlightening time for us, and I, for one, am excited to learn more about this important and useful site. If you're joining us via live webcast, welcome. We're grateful that you're here. And as always, uh, for those of you here in the room and watching online, we do invite you to share the link to this lecture uh, afterwards so that others can view it, um, either on our site or on YouTube. Once Dr. Fagan has concluded his presentation, we will open the floor for questions, uh, so be thinking about that as you're listening. And now I'd like to introduce our special speaker. Patrick Fagan is the director of the Marriage and Religion Research Institute, otherwise known as MARI, a social science institute studying the impact of marriage, family, and religion on children, adults, and society in general. A native of Ireland, he has a delightful accent to which I could listen all day, but I digress. Dr. Fagan began as a grade school teacher in Cork before becoming a psychologist practicing in Canada. In the mid-1980s, he moved from clinical work into public policy to focus on family issues. He began at the Free Congress Foundation, later worked with Senator Dan Coates of Indiana, and thereafter served as Deputy Assistant Secretary for Family and Community Policy under President George H.W. Bush. Fagan served as the Senior Fellow in Family and Culture Issues at the Heritage Foundation for 13 years before moving to the Family Research Council and founding Mary in 2008. Would you join me in welcoming him? Well, thank you, Bethany, and welcome to everybody here and to those on the webcast. Um, today we launch Marypedia. Um, and before I go further, first I want to introduce Christina Hadford, who you will hear from a little later. Uh, she's the managing editor of Marypedia, and without her brains, her studies, and her intense work, Marypedia would still be only a dream. She has turned it into reality. I would also like to thank the support of Rob Schwarzwalder, Senior Vice President for Policy here at Family Research Council. Oh, he's doing a sensible thing. I think he's away on vacation. Um, <laughs> but attending a conference, which may not be as sensible as I thought. <laughs> and also, of course, to our president, Tony Perkins, who's been very supportive of Mary over the years, and which has led to this point, which I think from here on, our work at Mary becomes a little bit more focused onto this particular product. If uh, describing it yesterday, somebody described the, our work was a bit more like a, a shotgun where there are many pellets going. Marypedia gives us the same amount of work but targeted into a product where people will be able to see it and track things and hopefully add cumulatively to the body of knowledge that we're producing. Well, I can do it this way. Yeah, would you do it from there? Yes. Thanks. Great. Well, to introduce you first to Mary, before we get into Marypedia, um, here we have a collage of many of the different products we do. The most important contribution we make is the original research at our own Dr. Henry Patrikas, who's here. Uh, has contributed a, a lot of original research, uh, much in demographics and then in labor and labor productivity and in finance, and is presently working on issues of, that, that will come to the fore in the next year, I think, on issues of religious freedom as it plays out uh, in our 501c3 areas. Uh, we produce also Mapping America, which is a, a very simple correlational demographic charting of the relationship between religion and marriage 
uh, across America. It sort of gives you a picture of who the American people are and what they're doing uh, by religion, by family structure, and all sorts of outcomes. Then we do synthesis papers, which is the work I did a lot at Heritage and continued here, which is synthesizing the work of other social scientists, where you sum up uh, comprehensively what the state of the social science in a particular area. And um, then we have a lot of special reports. We do the index of, of belonging and rejection each year, um, which was started by Nick Zill and then uh, continued by Dr. Patrikas. We have a lot of trend line data and all the rest. Now, all of these types of studies will be merged into, and already have been merged into, Maripedia, which we will go to next. Next slide. This iconographic sums up the mission and essentially the belief behind the work of Mari. Now it's a, a research derived belief that fits also with the philosophical and theological orientation of most people of America, which is that the intact married family that worships God weekly, so first there you have church, then marriage, or the courtship, then the couple, then the family, the impact of that on America, which you can see very clearly in mapping America, is that the intact married family that worships God weekly, on every single outcome measured in the federal survey system, correlationally, is the core strength of the United States on every outcome. Um, and that actually tends to be upheld repeatedly in different aspects of the social science. Now, not everybody will agree with that, and that's fine, because the debate in the social sciences is what yields by competition around ideas, better and better and more investigative, better controls of variables, you get more and more insight and more and more light is shed through the data on human behavior. So we welcome that, but that's the stance that's behind Mary, and we're upfront about it. Probably much more upfront than many people in the social sciences are today. <laughs> we state where we're coming from, but we're open to the data and welcome the challenge. The other aspect, actually, or the other belief, philosophical belief, but it's a bit of common sense, as most good philosophy is, that the social science is well done cannot but illustrate the way God made man. Actually, it, it, anything, that's a common sense description of reality, of the nature of the social science and the relationship between the creature and, his, uh, and, and the creator. The way man is made is exactly what the social sciences are there to investigate. So those are the two beliefs animating uh, the work of Mary. Next slide. Now, welcome to Marypedia. Here we have a picture of the homepage of Marypedia. Um, Marypedia, we link up to Mary. Then we have a number of major areas, and we'll go through this now a bit by bit. Next slide. Up in the top right-hand corner, you've got as is, oh, could you go back? As is the case with um, Wikipedia, and we follow very much a Wikipedia format here. So the, if you're familiar with using Wikipedia, you can probably take most of those sort of patterns, behaviors, and just apply them here. But for instance, if you wanted to search, you could search for marriage up there in the search box. And what you would get, next slide, is a drop down, much like in Wikipedia. And up there, the first one that comes up is the effects of religious practice on, on marriage. Next. Or another way you could go about a search is here on the left-hand side, you can browse by topic, and there are five major categories, which are the same five that are across the top of the screen, family, religion, education, government, or economy. And if you were to hit on family in either place, you would get, next slide, a drop-down. Again, rather similar to Wikipedia. And there you get on family, the state of the family. We have it by states, then by topics, marriage, divorce, family structures, and so on. 
And there again, you can see that marriage and, uh, and religious faithfulness, which is that other, uh, that same topic that came up in the, the other search. Next. So if, we were to, if you were to click on that, this is what you would get. And again, there, up in the top right-hand corner, you've got a table of contents. Now, in Wikipedia, they tend to put that on the left-hand side. But for program structure reasons, ours goes on the right-hand side. So you get the table of contents. And much as in Wikipedia, you could click on any one of those subsections, and it would lead you right to that. And you have the outline. If you were to scroll down through the page, you would get the whole long um, article. Next. Also, you can see the United States there, a hyperlink in blue, the typical web way of doing it. And if you were to click on that, it would bring you within Marypedia to this other entry, the State of the Family in America, and it has its own article. Next. Or if you were to click on Marriage, a different article, the State of Marriage. Next. Education, another article. And again, the same, it's, it's within Marypedia, it leads on to many other things. Next, employment. Next, sexuality, and so on. As you can see there, much the same as with uh, Wikipedia. You can hyperlink and crosslink and do all sorts of connections. Next, and sexual satisfaction. Can't leave that out. Next. Okay. <laughs> Back to marriage and religious faithfulness, that article we were using to illustrate. And here again, if you, you can see there the word marriage highlighted in blue, and the one, which is the footnote. If you were to hover over the footnote, you'd get the reference. Uh, this particular one from uh, Dr. Patrikas's work, U.S. Social Policy Dependence on the Family. And uh, below that then is the hyperlink, or the link to the, the whole report on the web. Next, alternately, you can scroll down to the bottom of the page, again as in Wikipedia, and there you have all of the, the footnotes all in one place. And of course, if you click on any one of those, they lead you back up to that uh, section in the text, as happens in Wikipedia. Next. Now, um, two other features. One, you can download our articles, any of the articles that are full articles within uh, Marypedia, you can download as a PDF. I think we're more user-friendly even than, uh, or person-friendly than Wikipedia on that. <laughs> you can download that as a PDF, use it whatever way you like, send it on to friends. Also, up in the, that you see that yellow highlight in the top right-hand corner is a tiny URL, where there's, it's a condensed URL, uh, URL which you can tweet if you want to tweet it on to friends. We'd be very grateful for that, and so will your friends, uh, enlightening them and with all sorts of good social science, uh, but also an easy way to forward it to others by email. Next. So on the home page, coming back to the home page, on this yellow highlight, you will see we've got three major features on the home page, and this is the first, the featured research. Depending on what's topical in the news, if there's some aspect of research we already have covered within Marypedia, we'll highlight it here in this, this box. Uh, people typically, if something is breaking, uh, in this case, the state of the black family, um, which is a report we did, there's been a lot of times in the last year where black issues were to the fore. So this might be something we would have featured at one of those times. You can click on that and, and delve into that. Next. On the other side is social science in the news. This is journalism that's going on, breaking, breaking news in the social science, having to do with marriage, family, religion, these whole areas. For instance, um, the one that's highlighted there, there is, there is one, that, the second one down, was a report that came out in the last week or two on children's altruism. And if you saw that, it was reported a lot saying that uh, children who practice religion more are actually less altruistic than those who <laughs> don't practice religion. Quite a controversial piece. We did an analysis and a write-up on it. Uh, bottom line, we think it's bad social science, but we say let the data out and let the 
let the competition begin. But the critique is pretty severe, um, and others have critiqued it similarly to the way we did. So there, these are journalism stories. So you click on those, they bring you right to the story. Next. Uh, for instance, that one, the one that was featured there, was on the economy, changing religion, changing economies, future global religious and economic growth. Very interesting uh, article, and a lot of interesting things happening actually in the area of religion. Within the last week, Baylor University, which has an institute or the study of religion, had a major uh, event at the National Press Club, uh, releasing some new, new work, particularly a book by Rodney Stark, one of the leading sociologists on religion. Um, by the way, he's quite optimistic. All the data is pointing, and he says, the world has never been more religious than it is now. And that's what the data shows, which is slightly contrary to what the press seems to be reporting. There is an increase in nuns, which means non-affiliated. But again, the more you dig into that, the more you see actually that the non-affiliated includes people who go to church each week and even to the same church, but will not say that they're affiliated with that church. They have certain reservations for not affiliating with the thing, but they might be very frequent, even weekly attenders. Now it goes all the way from that to people who don't go to church at all. So the, the word non includes a lot. There's a lot of variants. And a lot of uh, people who practice their faith and their religion actually to a fairly intense degree. So, however, back to this article. This is uh, one on, on, e on the economy around the world. Next. And OK, so that up there on the top right, not highlighted, and that top right was the journalism articles. Down at the bottom, we have recently released reports. Now, these are social science academic reports or research reports or government reports. This is where the real data is. It's not stories about them. It's good, solid content. Um, for instance, the one that's highlighted there, strong families, prosperous states, do healthy families affect the wealth of states? And if you go click on that, next, this is what you'd see. It would bring up this study, recently released by Brad Wilcox, Joe Price, and Bob Lerman. Uh, Brad is at the University of Virginia. Joe Price is at, Henry, do you remember where he was? BYU, that's right. Uh, that's right. Economics at BYU. And then Bob Lerman is at American University and the Urban Institute. Very interesting study. Strong families, prosperous states showing the correlation. And there you'd have the whole study. That would be a, a web direct link. Next. Now, taking both of those, those, both of those features or those highlighted studies were both on economics and, and religion or family. It's products like that that will feed the future expansion of Mary. And here we just drew up, made a mock-up of the sort of entry that would come from reports like that and be added to by other reports, where you've got the effects of marriage on financial stability, et cetera. That would come out of, for instance, the Brad Wilcox one. And we might have later one on religion and the economy, and there are many different uh, things that would feature into that. So that's how the future of Maripedia will grow. Next. Now, oh, could you go back up one? Um, we're just at the end. What we hope to do, now that Maripedia is a reality and on the web, not just a dream or a concept to talk about, um, there are a number of academics we hope will uh, join a board of advisors or, as it were, supervisors to keep quality control of the academic content. Anybody can make mistakes. That's why you have peer review. That's why you have journals. And that's why we need a, a board of advisors or monitors. Also, what we hope will happen over time is between donors, foundations, and the energy of professors and PhD students and that, that we will get more and more contributions to Maripedia, uh, built up from the work of others, not just the work of Mary itself, so that it could become a hub and gradually expand. If we're successful, that'll happen, and we plan on being successful. <laughs> okay, so that's the, that's an overview of Maripedia. And um, what we'd like to do now is take question and answer, 
And also, I'd like to bring Christina Hadford, our, the managing editor, the brains and the energy, uh, the chief architect and design engineer and builder <laughs> of Mary. Um, so, questions? So, um, I. Bethany, could on? you uh, flip over to the other? Thanks. Great. Okay. Just Great. To make sure this works. Um, since this, oh. I'm still here. <laughs> We're good. Um, since this site will be set up like like Wikipedia, um, and you have already articles on there about current events and things like that, will this will the site be um, updated w with new entries, new content, and research, and um, who also will be doing the editing or like adding the research? Well, uh, Christina can come in here. The All the research and all the editing will go through, Christina, through the manag managing editor. Will be different from Wikipedia in this regard. Wikipedia is open, even though they have monitoring and things get taken down, etc. We won't have that at all. Uh, all the content will come through uh, Christina, through the editor, the managing editor. It will be vetted by me, overseen. We'll have others have a look at it as well. But it will essentially flow through one person onto the... Where it will come from? The more the merrier, as long as the, the quality is good. And over time, we hope that will expand. Christina, anything you want to add to that? Um, so as he as he mentioned, um, we'll also have a board of directors that's going to contribute. So it's not only going to be married, but we're going to consolidate others' work. Um, and onto your other question, we'll be um, continuously, as new reports are released, we'll be continuously bringing those in, either incorporating them into existing entries, um, if they fit like we did with Brad's report, or we'll create a new entry to consolidate that, that new information. Um, and if anybody has a question about the website specifically, it's up so we can navigate it and show you. Yeah, this is live now on the screen. Is there going to be any interactivity at all? Like, for instance, people will people be able to make comments or uh, on what they read? Well, if they get my email or Christina's email, yes. Otherwise, no. <laughs> Though that's something we might consider for the future, uh, but we haven't built that in yet. Um, yeah, it's mainly what the main purpose of this is to be a repository of well-synthesized uh, research. So it's, it's not really made for discourse. It's made to feed discourse by others. And we hope over time to become a place that will develop a reputation for a fair representation of what the social sciences are saying. I, I, I have two questions. Um, the first is, what demographic are you trying to reach with this? And second, um, in college campuses all across the country, they're talking about this question amongst students. And the question is, where how are you going to get this to college students and or college campuses um, throughout the next year? Well, through Twitter and <laughs> Facebook and, and students who come to it and then let their fellow students know about it. And if it serves well by being a, a good broker, and of course the more it grows, the more useful it's going to be. It's at its nascent stage now. Uh, but uh, as Wikipedia was 10 years ago, Wikipedia today is, you know, a phenomenal resource used by all sorts of people across many disciplines. Um, this would be slightly different, but ho hopefully it will expand in a similar way. And the bigger it is, the better it will be. So who are we aiming it at? Students would be one of the key groups. Um, and the reason for that is there is, and it's, it's a sad state of affairs, in the social sciences on campus, there's a political correctness that is blocking what is the natural discourse of the social sciences. Um, one that I've commented on, we don't have the nothing here prepared for today, but uh, one of our fellows, uh, Dr. Paul Sullins, a research professor at Catholic University, 
has done some of the best research on same-sex parenting. He's got more coming out. And by the way, the, I've seen the tabs of the, of the forthcoming research. There are positive outcomes for same-sex parents. There are more negative outcomes. And Paul will deliver both. He's an honest broker of the data. But here's a sad fact. He cannot get published in the United States. None of the major academic associations, neither the American so Sociological, the American Psychological, nor the National Council on Family Relations, in any of their journals, will publish research that shows the negatives of same-sex parenting. So you have here, this is, this is an awful state of the social science on, these, on this issue. It gets into, a, it happens in a couple of other areas, but there's a political correctness which is a suppression of reason happening, which is part of the reason why this is not an open um, uh, website. So getting to students is going to be key, and I hope that it will serve over time to foster more open debate, because by carrying the data in a decent way, uh, statistically rigorous, or if it's not rigorous, you state it, because some things, there's studies are only indicative, but the controls or the ends are not big enough. So if you state that, then at least you've got a good hypothesis formation going. And that's the way knowledge goes forward in the social science. Professors would be ones we would hope within. So a bit of controversy would be no harm. And uh, controversy with us will be no harm. And sometimes if we make mistakes, we want to be honest brokers, admit them and change it. Uh, that's the nature of good social science. Now, other people to get there, the ordinary layman. It's written in a way the ordinary layman can, can read. Hopefully journalists will use it, at least check it. If you're writing a story on something, well, what does Maripedia say about this? Uh, what does the research that it has captured say about that? Pastors, parents, school teachers, high school teachers in particular, community college students, community college students. I think there's a very wide uh, potential audience for it. Christina, I've probably forgotten something that you. Um, well, one of the main motivations for creating Maripedia and really Mary's work in general is um, the vast amount of social science data in the federal survey system that the average person can't really understand because they're not a social scientist or they just don't know about. So we hope to bring all of that information in these entries that are short, concise, and to the point so that people can access that information um, and use it in their day-to-day -day life. So really anybody who's interested on the topics of marriage, religion, sexuality, and they just want to know more about it, they'll find this helpful because it's, it's based on peer-reviewed data or, survey, or federal surveys. Actually, one aspect that even though it's marriage, religion, and family, in their operations, they infuse all aspects of society, the economy, health, happiness, mental health, productivity, savings, education performance, crime, addictions, all of those are modified by what's happening in the behavior of the individual, either nested within their own family or nested within their family of origin or intergenerationally and what they are doing in terms of worship of God, of prayer, of uh, affiliation with a religious community. All of those things affect all of society. Um, i just curious. My, uh, microphone. Oh, sorry. Just curious to know how you're going to be able to kind of showcase, shall we say, the controversy. And I think controversy is good because it attracts more public. And instead of preaching, I mean, I think this is going to initially be preaching to the faithful, basically. How do you attract people who wouldn't normally come to Marypedia? And maybe showcasing a little bit of the controversy and showcasing a little bit of the you know, ongoing discussion might be a way of attracting people who wouldn't normally come to this. So have you thought of how to kind of showcase? I mean, I, I know you don't want to lose control, but it would be good to showcase the controversy and see that, and demonstrate that you're open to that. I think we'll, we'll learn as we go along. I think you, what you're indicating is 
excellent and obviously a way to go because controversy does bring readership and readership then brings influence or at least people uh, pay more and more attention to you. Who knows, we might have a subsection controversy <laughs> within the, the media aspect or even the, the recent reports. For instance, Paul Sullen's work will be controversial just because of the topic it's addressing. No matter how well he does it, uh, same-sex parenting is going to be uh, quite controversial no matter what the findings are there. But you get the same on abortion. You get the same on contraception. You get the same on divorce. There are many areas that are controversial. Drugs, euthanasia, suicide, uh, a lot of ethnic issues, religious freedom issues, all of those are going to be controversial. Um, how to broker honest academic debate would be great to develop a way to do that. Haven't solved that yet, but would like to work towards it. Might even have a section open debate, controversial debate, controversial academic debate would be very nice. I also, I also think just having this information available for people to share because um, most of our journalists and professors primarily pick data that is kind of leaning in one direction. So just, just to have this information available um, will allow itself to you know, work out in the public discourse. Um, as to spreading that information and showing, you know, what Merip Meripedia makes available. Um, I guess that's just over time. And, you know, sharing, if you find an interesting article, to share it on Facebook or Twitter. Um, let your friends know that this is available as a resource. It's great for, for writing papers, um, for people at universities. Um, I, I'm hoping that aspect will, uh, uh, students, no matter what their philosophical or ideological or ideological orientation We're going to find a lot either to knock or to use on Marypedia so that should help um, what do you hope will happen with the information now that it's available um, to the public I mean we could use this to fight for family values in Congress we can use it to impact society, what ways do you hope it will impact society, I guess, now that it's available? Well, that's getting behind the whole reason for Mary and why even social scientists get into social science. It's, it's one way of trying to do good, uh, intellectual good, adding clarity to something. So I think all social scientists, no matter what their orientation, tend to take that on that way. Um, To be useful to Congress, well, congressional staffers should know about this, and that'll be up to us, our government relations department, and that to make this more and more known and as it gets useful. I think for many people, there's a derivative product that we probably won't have here, but we will have on Mari, where if you were to take those entries, to have a one-page version of that is going to be... <laughs> Attention spans are getting shorter. <laughs> and for many people, even reading what's not a terribly long article is too much. So if you give them even a shorter piece with links to the hyperlinks to where those who want to can dig down further, that's something we will probably do more of in the future. So more of the same but shorter. And if we can get it down to how many letters are you allowed in tweet? So that's going to be the ultimate condensation of a social science insight. <laughs> One actual um, resource on Meripedia, let me show you since we're up here, that I think will be helpful for maybe people in Congress, um, is we have an entry for each state and Washington, D.C. Um, so for example, we'll take Alabama. Um, you can go to this entry and you can see what their um, family belonging is, um, where they rank in the United States, and we have um, a whole bunch of outcomes for adults, for children, um, and we have Core Plus produced by Henry that break down the state by a whole number of factors, teenage out of wedlock births, we have employment, we have um, government dependency. So that'll be helpful for a lot of people, both, both in the government and just the ordinary person who wants to know how their state's doing. Actually, on that one, everybody here, you, where you live, the, the puma of where you live, go to your state and you can get all sorts of outcomes that you probably didn't realize about your local, if not neighborhood, uh, neighborhood plus is about the way. They're, they're not zip codes, 
there's slightly different ways that census has of doing it. But that, that's going to be of interest to a lot of people, just to know their state and to know their subset of their state. My question is, um, what's the likelihood of someone stumbling upon this um, in their Google or Google Scholar search? Um, are we putting, or is Marypedia putting itself in sort of a position to be found by stumbling upon it, or is it really something you can only sort of come across if you were looking for it intentionally? <laughs> I think that depends on um, the traffic. I don't know how Google works, but eventually, hopefully, it'll, it'll show up on Google. I mean, I know now some of the articles have, um, and I think as we get more traffic, it will be, but you, you don't only get it by accessing, by going directly to our site. Also, there, there are ways, I know there are ways that if you know the algorithms, you can do it. And we have other staff at FRC who are pretty good on that. Now that we have this up, we'll be learning from them and learning how to present our, even the way you title has got a lot to do with how uh, Google takes it and how high up the list you get. So we'll be learning how to do that. Good question. We'll hire you if we get the extra budget, you could do more of it. <laughs> Okay, I think we're coming to an end, right? No more questions. Thank you very much, and welcome to Marypedia.